Hello again everyone and welcome to the second installment in the electronics tutorial series. Today I'm going to talk to you about voltage, current and resistance. Um, and now that I think about it, I should have done this uh, for the very first tutorial um, instead of starting with Ohm's Law. But that's okay. I'm sure we can get through this now. So, in a circuit, we have three things, and this is basically what Ohm's Law was all about. We've got voltage, um, and the combination of voltage and resistance gives us a certain amount of current. So I'm going to try and give you an analogy that I just came up with tonight to, um, to hopefully help explain this. So you've all seen things like Wheel of Fortune or The Price is Right, where they've got those big wheels and they spin it. So I'm going to use that. So picture a big wheel. So it's got some bearings in the center and it's held there by some kind of mount and then it's just on the ground. Let's divide all these up into different segments. Like so. And let's have that little ticker thing up the top. And we can see where we are. Alright, so picture this now. Let's picture that you're on the prices right or something like that and you want to spin the wheel. So if you were to come down and push, give some downward force to this wheel, then the wheel's going to want to spin this way. The harder you push it, then the faster it will spin. Now picture this. What if there's someone else on the other side and they're pushing down on the wheel also with exactly the same amount of force that you're pushing down which way will the wheel turn or will it turn at all so of course the answer is that it's not going to turn at all if you're pushing down so you want it to go this way and the other person is pushing pushing down so they want it to go this way with exactly the same amount of force the wheel will just stay exactly where there is, where it is we won't actually get anywhere so what we're looking for with voltage is we need to have a potential difference. If there's no potential difference, we get no current flow. And in this example, we don't get the wheel turning. So in this case, if we took this person away, we've now got a difference in potential. So you're pushing down over here. Over this side, there's no... Um, potential trying to press push this way or there's no force trying to go this way so there's a difference and the wheel will spin if there was exactly the same um, potential or force on either end it wouldn't turn at all another example of this would be to remove both people again there's no difference in potential nobody's trying to push this side nobody's trying to push this side so again we don't get anywhere nothing spins um, no current flows all right, let's now say that each one of these segments has one coulomb of charge. One amp, so current is measured in amps, one amp is defined as um, when one coulomb of charge passes a certain point in one second. That is one amp. So if each one of these segments has one coulomb of charge and we give this enough force or so much force as to make this spin and to have one segment every second passing this little ticker, we would call that one amp. If we spun it twice as fast, so we gave it twice as much force or twice as much voltage, then we would get two of these segments passing this little ticker every second so we'd get two amps the faster we push it or the more force we give it or the more voltage that we apply then the more current we get because this will spin faster now let's talk about resistance resistance would be likened to the bearings that this is mounted on if we had terrific bearings 
then there'd, there, there'd be hardly any resistance. So we could give it some force and it would spin. If we were to replace these bearings with some really old, rusted, non-lubricated bearings, then that would have a whole heap of resistance. So if we were to apply the same amount of force that gave us one amp, or the same amount of force that gave us one of these passing this ticker every second, but now with the really poor bearings, then it's actually not going to spin as fast. So we will end up with less current. Same amount of force, we've now added resistance with some really bad bearings, we're not going to get this spinning as fast. So we might only get half an amp, or not even half an amp. So if we liken that to our circuit, here's our power supply, here's our resistor, or the resistance in the circuit. It's these two that determine how much current we get flowing. So the battery or the power supply is like you, that's the person. The resistance in the circuit is like the bearings. So if I was to come along with one volt, so the difference in potential between this point and this po point is one volt. Let's put a really low value of resistor in of one ohm. We know that current equals voltage divided by resistance. So one volt divided by one ohm equals one amp. In this circuit, we will get current flowing in the order of one amp. So let's liken it back to this. If I was to push down on this with even more force, that would be like increasing the voltage to two volts. So I'm over here, I push down on this with twice as much force as I originally did. I increase the voltage by twice as much as I originally had. I'm now going to get two amps. Still the same bearings, still, still the same amount of resistance, but the voltage has doubled, so my force has doubled. This will spin twice as fast. This will allow twice as much current to flow, and we get 2 amps. What if I put this back to 1 volt, but I increase my resistance to 2 ohms? So I'm back to my original force. I'm going to push down on it with the same amount of force that made this spin with one segment passing here every second. So I got 1 amp. But now I've replaced it with the dodgy bearings. So that same amount of force is not going to make this spin as fast. So current, voltage divided by resistance. We're back to one volt, but now we've got twice as much resistance in the circuit, two ohms. I'm now going to get half an amp or 500 milliamps. Voltage stayed at one volt. My resistance has increased, or it's doubled, so now my current is now less. It's only 500 milliamps. To counteract for this increase in resistance, or to counteract in these dodgy bearings, I would now have to push down with twice as much force in order to get it to spin at the same speed that I had before to give me one amp. So I'd now have to increase my voltage. So current equals voltage divided by resistance, 2 volts, 2 ohms, and I'm back to 1 amp. So that's my little analogy on how voltage, current, and resistance um, come into play in our electronic circuits. You've been watching another Retro Brad video. Be sure to check out and subscribe to my channel for more electronic projects, hacks, how-to videos and tutorials. God bless.